The private investments into global fintech uh, raised from uh, 2010 from 2 billion to 19 billion, roughly 19 billion in 2015. So there's a huge interest globally on this uh, industry. And one of the investors in this field is our next speaker, Morten Lund. Uh, I guess you all know Morten from his investments. Uh, he invested in more than, or he successfully invested in more than 100 plus uh, startups, co founded a lot of them. And you might know him from his early investment into Skype, of course. He's, uh, he is a, he's really a rock star, and he's not only an investor, and uh, uh, he's also an innovator himself. So he created Hippocorn, um, which is his. Uh, Financement, financing vehicle, his investment vehicle, but uh, also he's spending 50% of his time innovating himself, so he has a laboratory where he's working, and not only on digital products, but also on hardware um, products. So pretty interesting, I would like to know more about this, and of course how he sees the fintech world evolving. So please welcome on stage from Denmark, uh, Martin Lund. Thank you, man. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm in a little bit of a hurry because I think I have 120 slides. <clears throat> so you have to bear with me. And I'm also a little bit nervous whenever I start out. So you probably know my name. I come from sales and marketing. I started an, a, a web agency before the internet was working. So in 94 and 95, we had a lot of discussions with <clears throat> all, the <clears throat> all the marketing heads of Coca-Cola and other large companies, whether SMS would actually be something interesting or web or text TV. So I have that full knowledge, and, and, but I still, the, my, my favorite thing in the world is still marketing. The most important part is, of course, my four children. And to, 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 to stay ahead as a, both an innovator and, and a creator while I somehow had to understand also the financial work world, but I'm coming back to that. Um, and also, since I've been in this for so many years, I now know that ideas are worth nothing. It has, it, somebody has to create it and take that hard, hard part where you take it from an idea and take it up from a surface, from a table, and turn it into something real. But that process, I've been doing this since I was 19 in all kind of digital stuff. So I have some kind of an experience, but I'm also more humble than ever. And I'm super happy to see guys like Deutsche Bank even trying to, to, to take this serious. Of course, it's all just mumbo jumbo with the 750 million. That's to take the budget over three years. They spend anyway, and they give it to IBM today. Now they'll put some of it into innovation. And that's kind of cute, but it's funny that they want to take the effort and even throw a conference like this. So I execute m minimum viable prototypes, very fast hacks, very fast to market. We try to test it, see who will survive and who will die. And some of this shit, now, compared to 20 years ago when I started, this ser the web server didn't work. The, the Microsoft web server didn't work, so we had to fix it. Now, a guy like Stuart, a friend of mine, he set up a management service of people who want to have their home on Airbnb, but they don't want to do all this crappy communication with all kind of idiots themselves, so they let Stuart do it. And he's just done APIs and Zapier integrations to his Gmail and to all his stuff. He has zero code, but he has two, 1,200 apartments in, in Asia, in Bangkok and Singapore that he's managing for people who like to rent out on Airbnb. So shop economy on economies on sharing economy. This is going to change a lot. And there's also a big opportunity here because they need all kinds of interesting financial services. So I, my idea is that it's just to execute now and fast. And of course, you can't do that in fintech because you have all the legacy and the, and, and the, and the compliance to keep up with. But we have gone, a very far, we've gone very far already since the first discussions I had with banks 15 years ago. Now it's, it's, it's all here, and I'm coming back to that. So of course, personally, it's interesting to know that I made a shitload of money because I gave the guys at Skype some money because they couldn't pay their apartments and they couldn't pay the coders, so I lent them a little bit of cash. And I made a lot of money from that. I was also stupid enough to lose all of them because I invested in some stupid stuff. But that's what entrepreneurs do. And I've dealt a lot with you know, banking idiots like you guys, enough to understand how it works and, and, and actually build on it. And, but my bankruptcy showed me that I had to understand money because until then, I had so much money all the time. Every time I looked at my account, it was just full. 
But then suddenly, seven years ago, there was no money, and they picked up my art and my cars. The cool thing was I was not less happy. I was actually more happy, and I have to understand money. And this is your problem, because now I'm coming after all of you, or with you, if you want to, because we're creating international financial products, because I had to understand how to finance my own businesses. So my life is totally crazy. So I can invent stuff or invest in people who invented stuff, like these guys who invented a plant. This plant you see on this very picture actually is genetic, genetically modified, so if it smells TNT, it will turn red. It can detect landmines. Uh, you could get goosebumps if you had emotions. I don't know if you have emotions in this business. But it's kind of cool. And all media in the world thought it was cool. I, we were on the front page of Time, we were on CNN. We just had a classic problem for me. And this is also why, be careful when you play with people like me. Because we forgot, let's see if this works. We forgot how do you plant this plant if there's landmines. We couldn't plant our plant, so the project died. But it was a cool project. Okay, you don't get it. But so what I do is right now I focus on a company we call MoneyWorks. I fo fo focus on a company we call TransferWorks. You know, from the past, I was part of Kazaa, Skype, I built this Bulgar thing. TradeShift was my big revelation into understanding fintech. So TradeShift is the most boring company that I've ever been part of. We started seven years ago when I was bankrupt. And it's basically an electronic invoicing system. So you can only send an invoice today to Nike, the British government, and a lot of other companies on our platform. Of course, it gives us a lot of financial insight data that we can use for a lot of interesting things. And that was very lucky out of my bankruptcy that I could turn this company in and we raised the 100, 100 and, $220 million by now. And it became a really large company. But, and it was also good for my self-confidence that I could prove that I could do it again. And then I'm doing a lot of other stuff. But it's mostly fintech these days. Um, so half of it, as, I w as, as we said, is, is, uh, is innovation, where I walk around and, and think of crazy shit and call people and you know, find stuff and combine it. Because being the sampler in this economy is much more interesting than being the innovator. And then in the other part of my, my life, I have a, a, a series of, of investment banks where we help companies to raise money, sell their company, merge or whatever. Because I did that all my life, I just forgot to charge for it. But now that I had no money, I learned to charge. So we have, I think, 60 people in investment banking who are helping all kinds of companies and people to get together. And of course, we also help very rich people placing their money, where we also make money. So just as short trends, if we can get by this. I think we're straight out lucky that this is the beginning. And we, we all feel it, but we forget it. We have to understand exponential. The, the brain cannot understand exponential. We cannot think about getting from here till Christmas, we can only think in weeks. But if we put anything in exponential into it and, and, and do that in our business life, you know, take a, take a photo of this screen. Because when you get this, then you see what the potential of online business is. Because we have a global market and we can actually reach crazy growth curves if we just dive enough into the marketing and understand all those channels. I'm coming back to that. So we have to know the, the growth and the, the, the very importance of, of the KPIs of this business. We have to understand the area of disaster. All of you guys who are going to play just a little bit with an interesting, innovative idea will have to manage this area of disaster. The area of disaster is when you can't you know, do a normal business like Walmart. They just took forever to build the largest company in the world, one of the largest companies in the world. Well. Amazon, they didn't really want to believe in this, so they started in investing. And, and all the time, Amazon has been investing to become bigger or more profitable, unless they never showed any fucking profit at Amazon, which is a little bit hard for this equation. They will be under, under the, 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 the linear curve of, of growth. The other thing, you don't think about it, because we don't think about stuff we have that is just here in our present. But the, all the computer... The, 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 the supercomputers you have in your pockets was 15 years ago, it would cost $20 million and it would be lying in a bank and it would probably be plastered with something called AS400. Some of you will see this joke. Now you can buy it for under 100 bucks and there's another scheme. The guy who's the richest man in the world, he's the biggest loser in the mobile world. Nobody uses Windows for the phone. For How many has a Windows mobile phone in here? Does he exist? He doesn't. He exists. The rest of you, how many have an iPhone? Yeah. 
These are all the idiots who believe that the first world is so important that I have to have an iPhone and log into this expensive brand. Because in reality, everybody is using Androids, of course, because it's open, you can do whatever you want, you're not locked in to Steve Jobs' craziest ideas of, of walled gardens. I like my kids to have an iPhone so they can't surf too much porn, but they get around it. The, the whole idea of understanding the trends is, is extremely important. Of course, education, everybody in the world can now be educated. So there's nothing special, even in this country I love so much because of the engineers and all the nice cars that you produce to the world. Everybody can get to this level very fast if they're a little bit hungry and they have some kind of a screen somewhere in the world with internet connection. Education is becoming a commodity, and I love it. Another thing that my kids will never understand unless they get pestered from this stupid iCloud from, from, um, from Mac that you have to upgrade because they're putting your shit in the iCloud. Bandwidth and storage is free now. It's crazy when you, I have fiber at home, but sometimes I have to go to my, my phone, throw a Wi-Fi network from my phone because it's faster in that part of my house than my fiber connection. So my cell phone is faster than my fiber connection. How crazy is that? We have to understand, and this is probably interesting for all the, the, the banking people here, that Atoms is turning into bits. What, what was normal in, in I mean, where, where is the photo album? It's gone. I mean, I was in my childhood. I mean, I'm so old that I was looking at photos in an album. My kids will not have this unless I print some books. Everything is becoming digital. And that, both music, maps, where's the map industry? It's gone away because, I mean, I'm using Google. I would mean, did you see anybody with a map lately? I mean, some Chinese tourists in Paris maybe, but it's not going to happen. It's, it's over. And this is where we have to understand the value of the blockchain and all these crypto cryptocurrencies and see how does that work because... How do you buy the first edition of a new record today? Well, then you have to get to hold of Justin Bieber and somebody has to encode some kind of code into the first release he puts out of his new song. So you can buy that and, and it will have a value, but we need a trust system which could easily be the blockchain. And remember, nobody has a clue. And it was so relieving also to hear the Deutsche Bank guy saying that we, we don't know, but we have to test it and see. Another thing is that, you know, machines will replace humans. And yes, everybody says it, but it's, it's, it's more interesting even that, from my perspective, what Elon Musk said that, I mean, human-driven cars may be illegal, but won't it happen to banks as well? It will probably, the, the compliance part will have to have new standards. There's so many things we have to invent here that there's no end to the business we can do. So... And how scary it is, by the way. These are so fucking scary to me. I, 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 I don't understand. What, what will they... Imagine if it came into your bedroom one day. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, and we have, we, have new, we have new things. We have anti-robot protests. Elon Musk, Thiel are putting money into making regulation around artificial intelligence because it's going to come for real. It can probably predict what the fuck we're thinking. It's going to be a little bit weird to your wife, but it's going to come. 3D printing. We're going to, we can print stuff that we can't imagine. We can print a, a weapon. We can print a pill. We can, we can do whatever we want. But how do you succeed? In my little note, you have to, in, in, in my little world, you have to have a lot of structure. And it's very hard if you're a creative. But I probably just had to, to learn because all, every, all, everything I did looked like this. You need a lot of structure. You need to repeat constantly and understand that Building software is about iterations. And that's also why you can see somebody as, as large as Deutsche talking about iterations. It's kind of funny, though, talking about having an innovation lab in San Francisco with IBM. I mean, what the fuck does that work? You have to, you have to th think about the fact that you can do it. It's possible for everyone. The technology is out there. Spend two nights hacking something, and you can build your own prototype. You don't have to be a coder, or you can rent a coder somewhere. You have to go extremely into details. And they, they, I mean, uh, sometimes I have to, 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 you know, to tell everyone around me that I'm off the world for three, four days because I have to understand how blockchain will work directly in with the Visa and MasterCard clearing houses. All of that, it's so fucking hard and complicated, but you can call anyone, you can probably make a couple of connections here today to actually do game-changing stuff. But you have to communicate a lot, be careful with conferences, still go, but then go home, enter your lab, and think. Value the, 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 the quality of thinking. 
Of course, you also have to build a team, and you have to have the team with the best data. This was called insights in the, in the trading world, but here it's free. It, it's, it's okay to have insights, and you can just read and, and find them. It's not hard. And you have to dream extremely big and, extremely and, and work extremely hard. And you have to break the rules. You don't have to do something illegal, but you have to break the rules of, of conventional thinking. Unless you break those, you're going to end up being the next consumer bank, the next online consumer bank. How fucking stupid is that? I mean, Deutsche is there, everybody is there. Do something innovative, something small, niche that is really needed. Do a platform that, that, can, that can serve a niche within a financial industry, and they'll come jumping at you. So, of course, you have to be smart, you also have to be intelligent, and you also have to, to be the best at sales. And I think sa the sales part is missing a little bit in everything technology, and especially banking, and that's why it's so easy to be me. I mean, it's like selling kids, I mean, candy to kids. Whatever stupid idea I get up with, I'm the only guy who can present it even half interesting. So work a lot on that if you want to go out there and sell financial services. I think it's extremely important. And then, of course, build fast and build small. Remember, there's only one Facebook per decade. I mean, don't, don't, don't ever mention, uh, especially for the startups, that you want to be the next Facebook or whatever. Just take it easy. And that's also why I built my, my family office and my, my investment bank vehicle. And we, and we called it, if this works, and we chose to call it Hippocorn because the unicorn, it's, it's kind of funny, but we want to be that fat hippo lying at the bank. You know, it's actually the, the animal that kills most people. It's not funny, but, you know, we, we want to build Hippocorn as the, as the investment bank and the sharing house where you put in ideas. If you have a good idea, you put it in, and we will virtualize how to do investment banking. It's not going to be strict ties. It's going to be merit and brain-driven. That, so that's something I, I, I'm focusing on. And the same, we want to virtualize it. So we want to be like, you know, you don't have to own anything. You don't have to own that bank license. Forget it. I mean, it's too, too difficult. I was very impressed that Finleap told me yesterday that they have a license. I mean, it's super impressive because I tried a couple of places in the world. And it's, that's hard work. But that's also a skill. <coughs> but remember all these companies, they own nothing. Facebook don't own their content, but they're going to profit immensely from it. Airbnb are doing a pretty nice business from not owning anything but a platform. Three guys in a garage anywhere can do it, and you guys can do it if you com combine it with the right you know, uh, skills. And then remember that it's so cheap. Back to this. Reality is that you know, even the Amazon services now are getting, getting undercut both by both Facebook and Google. You can develop the craziest stuff, get access to the craziest machines, the craziest e-learning for free. It, it has never happened before. The same with stuff. And you, ah, uh, yeah, I don't want to go through it. So, so how do exactly do I work? So I throw these concepts and ideas, very unstructured, like sampling. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then I, I try to identify whether it's viable by going and selling it to a client. And then we try to staff it up after. Can we have the sound? No. No. Okay, so this is not funny at all. <laughs> Without sound, at least. So fi financial technology and, and data-driven strategies is, is, is what I'm a little bit obs obsessed with these days. So for here, I, I really love Germany, and, and it, it, it's, it's interesting to, to, to get the perspective. I mean, all the engineers, all the, the stuff that came out, also that you have buffets and swinger clubs, I heard. It's kind of weird. And the Sambers. And then I think you have a guy who really changed something in financial technology, Matthias. He built Fedor Bank, and they're, they're, they're doing so well. But the problem is, when you, get a, when you get success with a consumer bank, then you have a side problem with it. You need to raise a lot of equity, and you basically lose your company over time if you get really successful. And, and that's something you really have to, to think about when, when whatever you go into. With, with fintech to understand the underlying capital structures because it's very hard. So now I'll take the full speed of, of, um, of finishing this presentation. What do I do right now? Well, from TradeShift, I learned a lot. I created, I, I, I helped a lot with, I understood and I learned a lot from Fedor and understand all, understanding all the banking part. I created a secret project that I'll tell a little bit about today called MoneyWorks. And with all the, all, the, all the knowledge, we created something. The first product we created was Cashworks, which is the most simple factoring algorithm for large companies. 
basically we offer people to pay them a little bit before on a discount. There's no rocket science. Again, I'm just a sales guy who can present it. So all the banks, 10 banks in the world are already buying it, and we're, we're moving on with that. Another, yeah, okay, this is the walkthrough. It's a little bit too boring. We, and then whatever we make from these companies, we, sh we share with the, with the concept, with the buyer, and with the bank, if this works. Another, uh, bum, 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 there's a lot of slides here, huh? Another thing we're, I'm, I'm obsessed with is digital coll collateral. So how do we do digital collateral? Now that I can, you can give me collateral in your website or in your domain or whatever, how, how will that work? How will we be able to, to make algorithms for digital collateral so we have not buildings but code and a user base? How, how is all of that going to work for lending? We're looking a lot at web shops. How do we take collateral in these web shops, give them loans, and structure all of that? Another thing that I have never talked about actually to anyone is, uh, is MoneyWorks, which is a bank for the um, small business owners, the pizza guy, the hairdresser. Because most people, they have this feeling when they go into their online bank, line bank they want to shoot themselves. It's, it's a chaotic interface. So with, with, with MoneyWorks, we're basically... The strategy is fairly simple. We want to build a bank with, a, with, with two different companies, ba bank people and, and, and bank stack. So we build, a full, we build a full SME bank under another bank's license. So we're starting out in the UK. We're opening in Hong Kong. We're, we, we've been live in, um, in Russia for eight years, refining this strategy on serving the little guy. All of you who are consultants, you don't know the difference between your own economy and your company economy. Separating all of that, getting it live, and, and, and we can offer anybody who has a bank license anywhere in the world to do a 50-50 partnership where we, we put in half the money, they put in half the money, and we operate the whole thing. We just borrow the license. I also did this in, um, in the stock trading with a company called Seco, but it just took us 12 years. We borrowed a license to do stock trading in the US. We took, it took... 12 years to become the third biggest stock trader in the US, and we sold it for a couple of hundred million dollars last, last month. So borrowing a license and then operating under a license is, is what, what MoneyWorks will be doing. I am definitely very much out of time, so I'm going to skip a lot of this and go directly to my real passion. Which is, after all... Ah, oh, God. Mm. Oh, we still don't have sound? Mm. Let's see how this works. No. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I wanted, what I wanted to tell you about was um, at the end of of all the financial um, services and the opportunities, what I've been spending a lot of time on is trying to take the digital collateral into the, um, the microloan universe. So what we basically built with, uh, it's a pity here. What we built with Codus Trust is a student loan in the third world where we basically look at the world has 15 million freelancers right now. They're sitting out there working. We went, zoomed in on Bangladesh, and we found, oh, there's 500,000 people who are working as freelancers in this country. Imagine if we give them a loan and we take the security in their Odesk or Upwork profile. So we did that actually with Muhammad Yunus and I mean a big crowd of international superstars. And this year we will educate 10,000 people. They will get a loan. And while, while they, they educate themselves and go from $1 per hour on the freelance platforms, we can, we can basically take them some, to something like $15 per hour. So they can pay back their loan extremely fast and they can, it can change their life. And and that's what is fintech to me. That's, it has, it's a double whopper. You know, we can make a lot of money, but we can also help a lot of people. 
and Rockefeller Foundation and Tata Group, the biggest companies in the world, are now backing us. So it's rolling out all over India, Africa, a lot of Eastern European countries. And, and that's what I want to appeal to everyone here to try to do, something that can also help people who are not that lucky as we are, um, also thinking about the changes in Europe right now. I think that's it's sad. I can show you the movie with the with this with the sound, but it's very good. And I think that's it for me. Feel free to contact me, and have a great day. Thank you very much, Martin. You're welcome, uh, Martin. Uh, one question regarding uh, the project in Bangladesh that you yeah. did there. Um, if you educate them, you only educate them, you're, you're not educating them in coding, obviously, but what exactly are you educating them in? Yeah, you, you have to be, to get into our program, you have to work on a freelance platform. Okay. That means that you have a profile. Like, and then we, we, we tell you, okay, today you're working, you're typing in data for $1 per hour. And then we'll educate you and say, if you, if you do that $1 per hour, then you can maximum make 100 bucks per month. So we will lend you the 100 bucks. We'll give you an educational curriculum. So we have universities there. We have four schools there. Or you can do it online. And then we'll teach them to do simple code, HTML, mm -hmm. simple stuff so they can go from $1 per hour till eight to, to $15. I mean, it's, I mean, imagine you could do it eight times your payroll. That would be fantastic, actually. Yeah. No, it's very good. Yeah. And uh, do you also teach them with um, entrepreneurial knowledge? No, we don't want everybody to be an entrepreneur. We want, we're teaching them sales skills because it's very difficult to sell yourself if you're sitting in Bangladesh and selling yourself on an international platform. The guy, the, the guy in the other end could be in San Francisco. You, you don't have the same reference universe, but we're teaching them sales and coding. So, uh, referring back to one of the slides that you showed with Elon Musk, um, saying that in um, yeah, just two, three years, there might be uh, no human-driven cars anymore, four years. Um, and you said that also might relate to banks. How did you mean that? How, how much investments in the future will be still made, or investment decisions will be still made by humans? What would you say? Mm, I don't know. I think it's, th that's why I'm obsessed with the blockchain. It, it, it's, The, the problem is we have to design the system so that we can have these ledgers of registered data. But as soon as that's in place, the central banks, a lot of the transfer, a lot of the stuff, the financial services will, will be algorithmic, for sure. So will it be a human or a person running a bank? Is it a human or a person running a bank today? I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. Martin Lund. You're welcome.